Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom. You're my Prince of Peace. And I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Nisi, oh, Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom, my Prince of Peace. And I worship you, I worship you, I worship you, oh, oh, oh. and I worship you, I worship you, I worship you, oh, oh. Lord, I worship you, you are mighty. Lord, I worship you, you are holy. Lord, I worship you, you are glorious. Lord, we worship you, no matter what's going on. Lord, we worship you, Lord, we worship you, Lord, we worship you, Lord, we worship you. You are healer, deliverer, provider, way maker, miracle worker, miracle worker. And I worship you because of who you are. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, right where you are, I want you to lift your hands right where you are. I want you to begin to worship the Lord Jesus right where you are. The word of God says he inhabits the praise of his people. I uh, just command that, the, that the, the garment of heaviness that you have carried on you all this week, that you would pull it off and that you would right now put on the garment of praise. I want you right where you are in the name of Jesus to get up, call everybody in from every other room. I don't know if your kids are in the bedroom. I don't know if somebody's in the next room, gather your family, gather your siblings, gather your children, gather your spouse and come on in the room as we get ready to enter into the presence of the most high God. You are worthy and you are wonderful and you are awesome. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. And we bless you today. We bless you today, God, in the name of Jesus. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. Come on, sing. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. Declare it. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. All over the world, rain, fire, sing. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, by your angels. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And so we thank you, Father, that today your word is going forth. We thank you right now that your presence is filling every home that is connected this morning. Father, I thank you that every spirit of fear is destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare the presence of God. We declare the hope of God. We declare the glory of God. We declare the kingdom of God in your home, right where you are. Come on, open your mouth with me and declare with me, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in this house as it is in heaven. Listen, my name is Pastor Joanne Rosario Condry, and I have the honor and the privilege of pastoring an amazing church in Douglasville, Georgia, just 30 minutes west of Atlanta by the name of Rain Fire Church. And even though I am standing in an empty sanctuary today, 
I am here to tell you that you are the body of Christ. You are the sanctuary of God. You are the church. The church is not a building. The church is not four walls. The sanctuary is just the place where we meet together. But in the days that we're living in and COVID-19 and all of the different things that we have never experienced before, we can still right where we are, lift our hands and give God praise, lift our hands. And, and you know, I wanted the sanctuary. I didn't, I didn't ask the, you know, the, the worshipers to come. I didn't ask any of the musicians to come because I want, I want you to get a, a visual. I want you to understand that even when it is just you by yourself with no organ, no keyboard, no drummer, no worship team, that the glory of God is on you. And anywhere that you are, anywhere that you are, you can send up a praise. Anywhere that you are, you can make your living room the Holy of Holies. You can make your bathroom the Holy of Holies. You can make your closet the Holy of Holies. No matter where I am, I can, I can lift my hands and say, Abba Father, Abba Father, my heart's desire is to know more of your love. And then you can even sing songs that you just make up. You are my dwelling place. You are the glory and the lifter of my head. Well, Pastor Joanne, I don't, I don't know how to sing like you. Listen, it's not about having a voice. It's not about knowing how to sing. The word of God says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And so I challenge you, don't let a day go by this week. Even if, yes, you are stuck in your house, and yes, those kids are driving you crazy, and yes, you having to go back to equivalent fractions, and you haven't thought about equivalent fractions for 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, and now you find yourself in the middle of fourth grade like me, comparing fractions and equivalent fractions and all that great stuff. But guess what? God is still on the throne. Can I get an amen? God is still worthy. God is still good. God is still in control. You are favored. You are blessed. You are healed. You are living in abundance. Provision is for you. Blessing is for you. Open heavens is for you. Why? Because no matter what is going on around us, we are the children of God and we are blessed. So I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you this morning to our morning worship time. And I really encourage you, even after we get done, take a moment of time to pray with your family and start having family church home church, speak the word of God with them, take notes. And then after we're done, talk to your children, ask them, well, what did you learn? What, what, what did Pastor Joanne make you think about? And let's get active in discipling our families as we also seek to disciple the word. Amen. The world, excuse me. So I praise God for you joining us today. I thank God that you are connected this morning. We are going to get into the word this morning. I do believe that I have a word. No, I'm not going to say I do believe. I have a word of God for you. And I'm going to say that with conviction. I have a word of God for you. And before we get into that word, if you would do me the favor of going ahead and sharing this broadcast so that under others that are connected to you on your social media platforms would be able to get this word this morning, share it, share it, share it, because you never know what people are going through. This is a time that is is very strange. It is a time that can be very hectic. It, it, I, I mean, listen, I, I found toilet paper today, okay? Today, I was able to find toilet paper after not being able to find it for uh, several weeks. Uh, and that can make people anxious. That, that can make people worried. Um, you know, just the little things, the little things. But I speak peace over you. I speak peace over you, no matter what the news says, no matter what happens, I speak peace over you in the name of Jesus. So go ahead and share this so that others are able to be a part of uh, this time of word and of worship. And if you would do me a favor and go with me in your Bible to Isaiah 55, chapter 55, Isaiah chapter 55, verse six. Now you guys know we've been talking about faith. We have been talking, I mean, literally we started this year talking about kingdom, talking about who we are in God. We started talking about faith early in November. And I believe that in every word that God has spoken through this house, God has made us ready. He has prepared us. We have fasted more than we have ever fasted in this year. We have prayed more than we have ever prayed. Like if there was ever a time for us to be ready for this type of challenge, 
It is now because we have been seeking the Lord even since um, the end of last year. Pastor Corey was encouraging us to be on a seek fast and to seek the Lord. And we carried that into 2020 and we just came, uh, we came into 2020 aggressively. Okay. In the things of the spirit, we came into it very, very aggressively. And so we've been talking about faith. We've been talking about that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is the substance of the thing that is hoped for. It is the evidence of the thing that is not seen. But this is what God has really laid on my heart today. Um, and look at your, <laughs> look at your husband, look at your wife, look at your kids and remind them God's word will do what he said. God's word will do what he said. Because a lot of the issue that we have with fear is the fact that we don't believe that God many times is going to do what he said. Okay. Many times we don't believe there is not, there isn't a, like a deep seated understanding and a belief that, um, you know, that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. I was talking on the, on the prayer call on Friday morning. And if you're not on the power prayer call, please find me on social media, uh, download Periscope or, um, like my Facebook page. Um, or even we post them on YouTube. So please, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on that little bell so that you can, um, get notifications. You would just search Joanne Rosario Condry in, uh, in YouTube. But I was talking uh, to the power prayer call crew on Friday morning. And the, the scripture that was on my heart was be still and know that I am God be still and know. And my question to them that morning was, do you know, do you know, I know that the sky is blue. I know that, uh, in the fall, the leaves come off the trees because it has always been that way and it will always be that way. So there are things, you know, that if, if I jump out um, of a window, I am going to fall to the ground. I know it because I know of the force of gravity. I understand that, that you have to have a superior force to over, overcome the force of gravity. So you have to know that he is God. Faith is not going to work in your life unless you know God. Faith is not going to work in your life until you know and you trust his word, until you know him and you believe his word, until you are able to really, really know him. And I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that a lot of the hindrance of you knowing me, saith the spirit of the Lord, is the fact that your perspective is off. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Your perspective is off. Because you look back, you look back at a situation that worked out negatively and you see that as God acting negatively towards you instead of seeing the fact that God protected you, that God kept you, okay? That God was putting up a shield of protection around you because if he had allowed you to go ahead and marry that person, your life would have been destroyed. That if he would have allowed you to go into business with that person, that they would have put you into bankruptcy. He sees so many things that we don't see. And sometimes we look at the closed door. God, I thank you for your Holy Ghost. We look at the closed door and we curse God. I want you to know that it is time for you to stop looking at the closed door and cursing God. I need you to be able to look at the closed door and be able to stand in front of the door and shout and sing and praise and say, God, I thank you because if you close this door, then that means there's a better door that you have for me, that there's a better situation that you have for me and you are able to rejoice as opposed to sitting there like a little brat crying over the closed door, not understanding that on the other side of that, there was a pit full of snakes and God was saying that is not the door for you so a lot of times it's perspective a lot of times you're not trusting God because you perceive that how he has moved in your life that he's been moving against you when you don't even realize that when it seems like sometimes he's moving against you he's moving forward uh, he's moving for you because he is positioning you he is blessing you he is aligning you he's correcting you because he that loves corrects he that loves chastens he that loves will align. Now I'm able to see that so many denials and so many no's that God gave me was because he was setting me up for a yes that was coming down the road. God will do what he said he will do. You hear me this morning? I thank you, Holy Spirit. I honor you, Holy Spirit. Come on, lift your hands with me right where you are, right in your house and say, Holy Spirit, Speak to me this morning. I open my heart to your word and I thank you that every area that I am not able to trust you, I declare that that is going to turn around for me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
We've also been talking about if my people, that scripture that says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal and heal their land. And so, so much of that has to do with us turning. So much of that has to do with us walking away from evil. And I have really been encouraging, especially encouraging Rainfire Church, because you guys are the ones that I pastor. It is your soul that I'm responsible over. Seek the Lord and take inventory of your life to make sure that as far as you know, every area of your life is in line with the will of God so that you can release healing in this land and in this time, okay? But let's go to, as I said, um, before I got all wrapped up with the Holy Ghost, uh, Isaiah 55 verse six says, seek the Lord, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And this is the time. I don't know if you have felt like you, you were too busy. I don't know if you have felt in the past where your job was just too demanding and you kept saying to God, God, if I just had more time, I would spend time with you. God, if I had more time, if, if, if I didn't have to work every single day, Lord, if, if, my, if my agenda wasn't so congested, Lord, I would, I would definitely spend time with you. Now what? Now that you're home, now that maybe you're not working, now that you are able to be in that place. Are you, are you spending that time with God that you asked him for? I encourage you to do that because this is a great time. This is a great time to connect with God. And the word of God says, seek the Lord while, while he may be found. That means that there is a day and a time that is coming that people will try to seek God and they will not be able to because they missed the moment. They took God for granted. They did not ever turn their attention to God and their heart to God. I admonish you this morning and in this season, turn your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. You have said to him, if I had more time, God, well, now you have the time. What will you do with that time? He says, seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. He is still near. All right, the virus and all these different things are going on, but guess what? The Holy Spirit has yet to leave the earth. And let me tell you, I can't even imagine what this world is gonna look like when the Holy Spirit leaves the earth, because guess what? When the Holy Spirit leaves, we're leaving too. The church will be gone when the Holy Spirit is gone. And then what? Then what kind of pandemics and panic and, and, and tragedies will be going on all over the world? It's gonna be crazy. It is going to be crazy. But he says, while I may be found, seek me, call on me, call on me and seek me while I am near. He is saying, even right now, he is near to you, church. He is near. Pay attention to him. Give him your heart. Surrender. Stop fighting him. All you're doing is delaying your blessing. All you are doing is delaying your blessing when you are fighting God. Okay, verse seven. And it says, look at this. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the wicked, and sometimes, I'm sorry to tell you, but sometimes the wicked is sitting right up in church. Sometimes the wicked is sitting right next to you while you sit in church. I'm not asking you to look at your neighbor and call him wicked. I'm saying look within yourself. Are there wicked areas in your own heart? See, I got to go through this before I get to the blessing. I got to I gotta go through this before I get to the part where we can shout. Because if we go straight to the shouting part, but we never address the wickedness and we never address the sin and we never address those areas that are, that are painful to God and separate us from God, then God is not able to do what he wants to do in the time that he wants to do it. He's still willing to do it, but will he be delayed because of our disobedience? You see what I'm saying? It is to your advantage to line up with the will of God. It is to your advantage. Man, I remember how much I used to fight God and people would tell me, you go preach. And I would be like, the devil is a liar. I ain't gonna preach. I, I mean, I was so adamant about the fact that I was not going to preach. And let me tell you, now it is one of the things that I love the most because I love when people are blessed. I love when people say, oh my God, Pastor Joanne, I, I never knew that my life is changing. I feel joy, I feel peace, I've taken authority in my home. I'm confessing the word of God. I am walking in holiness because God is helping me. Man, it just fills me with joy. The satisfaction and the peace that I was looking for was in the will of God. It was in the will of God. So let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. See, that's talking to us because we stray away. And he's saying, come on back. 
Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. See, when you have gone astray, when you've been doing your thing, when you have been distracted, when you have been full of, 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 of doubt and of fear and of sin and of wickedness and iniquity, lack of integrity, he says, turn back to me, call on me. Listen, call on me, return to me and I will have mercy on you. See, this is not a word of condemnation. This is a word of hope. This is a word of excitement that the God that created the heavens and the earth, he says, turn back to me, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've been doing, he says, turn back to me and I will have mercy on you. That means I will forgive you, I will cover you, I will have your back. That is his posture, that is his heart toward us. He will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. That means there's forgiveness for you. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, there is forgiveness for you. And now look what he says. For your thoughts are not, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, he says. You would think that I would push you away because you've been so wicked. You would think that I would reject you like your friends reject you when they find out what you've been doing. You would think that I would turn my back on you and spit on you because I am a holy God. But if you turn to me, if you call on me, my grace and my abundance and my love will be extended to you. And then he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. I'm not gonna do like y'all do. I'm a God of love, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Okay? So we expect God to react a certain way, but he comes a whole different way. He responds to us with grace and mercy. And if you know that I'm talking to you, I just want you to take two seconds right now and say, Father, Forgive me of my sin and align my life with your will right now. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of turning my back on you. God, I'm tired of doing things my own way. Forgive me. Wash away my sin and bring me back into right standing with you. In the name of Jesus, come in, Holy Spirit. Come on in, Holy Spirit. I yield myself in the name of Jesus. And if you pray that prayer, I need you to send us an email today, info, I-N-F-O, at rainfirechurch.org. And we wanna be able to connect with you to help you grow in this journey, in Jesus' name. Verse 10, look at this. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, see there's consistency. God is saying, I'm consistent. As the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Look at this, verse 11. This is where we're gonna land, verse 11. So shall my word be as the rain that comes down, as the snow that comes down from the heaven. So shall my word be as you are able to wake up every morning and breathe oxygen, as you know when you get up, that the sun is gonna rise at a certain time and you know it's gonna set at a certain time, so shall my word be. As the forces of gravity keep the world in motion, so shall my word be. See, we are able to put our trust in all of these natural laws that God put in place, but we can't trust God. We can trust gravity, but we can't trust God. We can trust the laws of oxygen and the fact that oxygen keeps us alive, but we can't trust God. Right? We can put our trust in all of these natural laws. But God says, just as the snow and just as the water comes down from the sky and it waters the earth, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. See, there is a word that has been released, is being released, has been released, is being released, has been released, is being released, even right now. God is releasing word over us. God is releasing prophetic declaration over us. God is speaking over us right now. And he has promised that his word will go forth. And the word that comes forth out of his mouth, it shall not return to him void. What does that mean? That means that the word that comes out of the mouth of God, it comes 
Remember, and I go back to this all the time, in the beginning was the word, okay? In the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning, the spirit of God moved upon the water. The spirit of God moved upon the darkness. And what? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. The word of God came forth and the Holy Spirit was waiting on that word. When the word showed up on the scene, it performed the thing that, that it spoke. This is the reason why faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Because when you have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to the church, when you have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to Jasmine, when you have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to James, when you have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to Nicole, when you have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to Fundisha and, and to this individual and that individual, when you have an ear, when you have developed, come on, grab those ears and say, Father, give me an ear that can hear your word. Open my ears to hear your word because when you hear his word, faith will arise. When you hear his word, faith will arise. When you hear his word, faith will arise. When you hear God speaking to you concerning that sickness in your body, faith will arise. I'm not talking about just reading a scripture. I'm talking about when that scripture comes alive in your spirit and it becomes personal when you suddenly realize wait a minute he went to the cross for me he went to the cross for my sin he went to the cross and by his stripes I am already healed and suddenly nobody can convince you that you will die of that sickness and you will die of that disease why because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so in order for you to have a strong faith you have to have a strong trust in what God has said and you have to be able to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church and what he's saying to you today is listen to my word and understand that when my word God speaking when my word comes out of God I thank you I will run around this empty sanctuary all by myself God I bless your name right now God I glorify your name right now you are worthy to be praised and I magnify you I glorify you you are the king of kings and you are the Lord of Lords you are a mighty God. You are an everlasting father. You are the prince of peace. And I bless you and I honor you right now in the name of Jesus. Hear the spirit of the Lord saying to you today. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not. Not maybe. Not is it, it just might fail. It shall not. Somebody say that. It shall not. Somebody type that in the chat. It shall not. Somebody put that on your mirror. It shall not. He said it will not. That means it cannot. He said it shall not. That means it will not. It shall not return to me void, saith the Lord. That means that the word that was spoken over you as, you as a child, it is still hovering over you. And that word is going to fulfill what God has spoken. That word spoken over your husband, over your wife, that word is hovering and it is moving and it will fulfill the thing that God has spoken. That word that came upon you over your health, over your ministry, over your business, over your home, over your family, it will not go back to God void. That means that the word of God is going to hover. The word of God is going to move. The word of God is going to be there like an eagle that is waiting. That Like an eagle that is waiting. They know uh -uh, I'm not moving from this spot because something is getting ready to happen. That word of God and the Holy Spirit is waiting and that word is not going to leave your life until it accomplishes. Somebody say it accomplishes. Somebody say this word is not going to leave my life until it accomplishes what God has spoken. Come on and say it. I need you to get bold about it. I need you to get up out of your seat. I need you to stand up right there in your living room and I need you to declare, God, I thank you that your word is not going to leave my life until it accomplishes what you have sent it to do. God, I thank you. Oh, glory to you, God. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. It shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what I please. It shall accomplish my will in heaven 
that should be manifested on earth. It shall accomplish what I please. It shall accomplish my perfect will. It shall accomplish what I want it to do. God is saying that he is speaking. This is why I have faith. Because I believe that what he has spoken. Do I have weak days? Absolutely. Do I have days that I'm struggling? Absolutely. Do I have days that I am tempted to doubt? Absolutely. Do I have days that I wonder, God, will it really happen? Oh God, God, will you, will you really do it? Do I have those days? Yes, I would be lying to you if I said to you that I, I, that I don't have those days. And I'm not gonna lie to you and I'm not gonna pretend, but I will tell you, hallelujah, I will tell you that when I have those days, I know that I got to go back to the source of the word. I know that I have to go back to the source of the word. I know that I have to go back to the throne room. I know that I have to go back and have another conversation because obviously my faith is going lower and lower and lower because I am looking at everything that is draining my faith. I'm looking at the circumstance. I'm looking with my eyes, my natural eyes and not with the eyes of faith. So when my faith is low and I am struggling, I am going to go back to the giver of that word. <sighs> Hallelujah. I got to go back to, that, to the giver of that word so I can get filled up. And when he fills me up again with that word, then my faith will go back to the place where it was. You've experienced it. You've had a horrible week. You have dragged yourself into Rainfire Church. You didn't know how you were going to make it. And suddenly during the worship or during the offering, somebody said something and suddenly the Holy Ghost came on you and you went to crying and you said, yes, God, here I am. Yes, God, I trust and I believe. And a word comes forth that speaks directly into your situation. And you let you look and say, well, how did, how did Pastor so-and-so know what was going on with me? How did, how did Pastor Joanne, how did Pastor Corey know? How did this person know? or somebody just came up to you after church and started speaking to you and you begin to weep and cry because they are right on the money speaking prophetically to you and suddenly you feel hope again because you know God hears me God sees me and I'm not alone in this and faith rises in your heart it rises in your heart I pray that that's the position that you find yourself in today that if you find your faith being a little low you feel a little empty go back to the giver of the word go back to him Open your ears. Ask him to open your ears, open your heart, and let him speak that word over you one more time. And take this scripture with you into your week that we find in Isaiah 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. That means that word is not gonna go back to God without accomplishing what it was supposed to do, what it was purposed to do in Jesus' name, amen? Amen, come on, stretch your hands to your computer, to your phone, to your TV, whatever you have hooked up this morning. Father, I thank you right now. I thank you for the spirit of faith that has been, Father God, released during this time of ministry. I thank you right now that the spirit of faith to believe for healing is ignited. The spirit of faith to believe for deliverance is ignited. The spirit of faith to, to believe for victory and for, for provision and, and for abundance and overflow and, and, and breakthrough, Father God, is ignited. And I thank you, Father God, that today, 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 somebody has been reminded that God is not a man that he should lie. And this is the reason why our faith can be steady this is the reason why our faith can be unmovable because the one that has given the guarantee he is solid and he cannot lie so let your faith arise today in the name of Jesus because greater things are ahead of us there is a revival that is coming even through the plagues and even through the earthquakes and even through the evil and the dark times there is a revival and a move of God that is coming and it's going to be stirred up among the righteous it's going to be stirred up among the remnant it's going to be stirred up among the hungry that are turning their hearts back to the Lord and he said that the the, the latter rain will be greater than the former rain he said in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and I don't know about you but it's really looking like the last days so let's trust God let's believe God and let's be full of joy amen 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 I love you 
I bless you and I thank you. I thank you for setting aside this time. I thank you for being focused. I thank you for not allowing anything that's going on in the house to distract you. I thank you for listening to this word again during the week to make sure that your heart remains focused on the Lord. And I admonish you as well, as I have been saying daily on social media, this is not the time to break covenant. This is not the time. So I thank you and I bless you for your obedience to the word of God. And even today, as you take a moment after this broadcast goes off and you come before the Lord and you say, Lord, I need to bring to you my tithe and my offering. You already know what the tithe is. It is the 10% of everything that comes into your home and everything that comes into your hand. But the Lord may also put on your heart to sow an offering into the ministry of Jesus Christ here at Rainfire. And if you want to do that, you can go to our website, rainfirechurch.org, or you can text one word, Rainfire, to the phone number 77977. We encourage you to do that today, knowing that God is the provider of your home and you are taken care of because you are a tither. Say that with me, I am a tither, I am a giver, and I live in obedience to God. So even as I bring to you my tithe and my offering today and my life, I declare the blessing of God upon my home and I will not lack any good thing. Say that, my house will not lack any good thing because I am in covenant in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. And we will see each other again soon in the name of Jesus. All right. Be blessed. Make sure you're following us on social media. Make sure you're staying connected. And as soon as we are able to come together again, we will let you know when that day and that time is. And we look forward to that with expectation because we love to be together. We love to be in the house of the Lord. But while we are tucked away in our homes, enjoy your family, enjoy conversation, enjoy games, enjoy quality time and remain full of peace and joy. Amen. Amen. I love you. I love you. Have a great week.